This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to go over some basic principles of using Excel without relying on our mouse. Of all the Excel skills that you might learn, I think that learning to use your keyboard efficiently has your best return on investment. I've included a link to the file that we'll be using in the description, so download it so that you can follow along. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is start getting comfortable with using the control keys on our keyboard. So there are two control keys on the bottom left and bottom right hand corners of your keyboard. And the first thing that we're going to use them for is to navigate between tabs within our workbook. So by hitting control page up and page down, we can move left to right. So I'm going to hit control page down. And when I do that, I'm going to move along my list of tabs towards the right. When I hit control page up, I'm going to move back towards the beginning of the workbook all the way to the left. Now, one thing that's handy with this is you can actually use this in, in other uh, pieces of software. So if you're in a web browser or anything else that uses tabs, generally speaking, control page up, control page down is going to help you navigate between them. Let's move on to our next slide. Next, we're going to use our control and our arrow key together. So with the control key, we have to hold it down in order for its functionality to work. As soon as we release it, it's not going to work for us anymore. So what we want to do is to use the control combined with our arrow keys to navigate within and between arrays in our page. So what we have right here, so this is an array. Um, some of you may refer to it to a table, but, but I guess more appropriately, this is an array. Uh, in some of our other videos, we'll talk about the differences between arrays and tables. Uh, but now that we're in this array, we are going to use our control key. I'm holding it down, and now I'm hitting the down arrow key. As soon as I do that, my uh, active cell jumps all the way down to the end of the array. You'll notice that beneath this cell, there are there is no more data. So effectively, it stopped. Now, if I hit Control and hold it down and then use my right arrow, I'm going to move to the right-hand side of the array before it stops. If I hit, if I'm still holding Control, if I now hit the up arrow, I've now gone to the top cell. If I hit Control left arrow. I've now gone all the way to the left hand side. Now if I want to keep going, all I need to do is hit control arrow again and it jumps all the way to the left. So I can jump back in, control right arrow, control right arrow gets me all the way to the right. And now if I want to go over to the next array, all I need to do is hit control right arrow again. And now I can do the same navigation, down arrow, right arrow, up arrow, all using my arrow keys. Now. In a small array like these are, that may not be necessarily a huge advantage, um, but uh, if you're in an array that's hundreds or even thousands of cells, rather than using our mouse and scrolling down or trying to use our scroll bar on our window, um, we can just control down arrow. It takes us all the way to the last cell. Next, we're going to combine what we've done. Uh, with using our shift key. And so that lets us now select text. So again, if I control and down arrow, up arrow, I'm going to go through my array. Now if I hold control and the shift key, now when I hit the down arrow, watch what happens. I've now selected all of the cells in that array that are in that column. If I now hit the right arrow while holding the control and shift down, I've now selected all of the cells that are in this array. Now, if this is too many and I want fewer, all I have to do is release my control key while still holding shift. And now I can walk my selected cells back up again. I can do the same thing by holding shift and using the left arrow. And now I can reduce the columns that are included. So this is handy. Uh, a lot of times I'll have to copy. Let's, let's say I want to uh, copy this to a new worksheet. All I need to do is hit control and shift at the same time. Now hit down arrow, right arrow. I now have everything selected. I can copy it. I can go someplace new. It's all the way to the bottom there. And I can paste it very quickly and easily without any challenge. Now we're going to use our control key and our home and our end keys. So I, I've been in many situations where I have a worksheet and you know, I really, I don't know where the data ends. I go to the end of my array, 
and I'm not sure if there's anything more in the spreadsheet or if I'm missing anything. So now by controlling our control, uh, combining our control key with the end key, I can now find the last active cell. So what this tells me is that there is, I'm gonna use my mouse here, there is no data to the right of this cell and there is no data below that cell. Okay, so uh, anything above there certainly could have some data in it. Now that I'm way far away from kind of the beginning of my worksheet, I can now use Control and Home and get right back to the very first cell in the workbook, which is A1. So this can also be handy if I, let's say I want to copy everything in this worksheet. I can hit Control, Shift, and now End, and now I've highlighted every active cell within this workbook. If I copy this, I'm going to know that I haven't missed any of the data. We can now hit Control Home to get back to our beginning space. Now it's not real great worksheet design to have non-contiguous data like this. It really there should be an indication to the user uh, that there's going to be more data, but uh, unfortunately not every worksheet they're going to work with is going to be uh, that thoughtfully prepared for us. So control end, now we know that we haven't missed anything. Control home, and we get back to the beginning again. Uh, next we're going to combine our, or we're going to rely on our space key. Okay, and by doing that, it gives us a few uh, unique abilities. Uh, by holding the shift key and the space key at the same time, I've now selected an entire row. So if I go all the way to the right um, using my control key, it would have everything selected. So there we go, everything selected. Control left arrow brings me back. Uh, this can be handy uh, if we need to remove data. So now I can uh, hit control minus and I've now removed that whole row all the way across. Um, if, what if I want more space? Well, now with that whole row selected, I can hit Control plus, excuse me here, Control plus, and it adds additional rows for me. Control minus will now remove them. Um, and now I can also do the same thing with columns. In this case, I'm going to use the Control and Space key, and now I've selected that whole column. I can do the same thing by removing it. I'm going to undo that. Um, I can also add new columns the same way, Control plus, and now I've added new blank columns to my worksheet. Though the way that I remember this is uh, if you visually look at your keyboard, your shift key is wide. And so I think, okay, I want to go wide across the screen, it's shift space. The Control key is skinny, and so if I want to select a column, and be skinny on the screen, I just hit control and space in order to remember those two shortcuts. Lastly, we're gonna go through what I like to call the Rosetta key. Now this is probably uh, the most important thing that we're gonna go through in this lesson. And uh, I think without exaggerating too extremely that, that by learning this, you can now access every single uh, function in Excel with few exceptions uh, without needing your mouse. Uh, so it's really quite powerful. Now, a little bit of um, a contrast between the control key. So the control key is what I like to think of as an instant key. So while I'm holding control, things will happen that are impacted by it. As soon as I let go, nothing happens uh, with the control key anymore. The alt key works a little bit different. It's, uh, it's persistent or tenacious, as I like to think of it. Uh, and what that means is once I press it, it continues to be active even if I don't hold it down. So again, with the control key, we had to he keep that control key down for it to have any impact. With the alt key, it's different. So I'll give you a little bit of an example here. So what I'm going to do is we'll press the alt key and release. Now, as soon as I've done that, I now, if you look at the top of your screen here, you're going to see all sorts of letters. Each of these letters corresponds with one of the tabs uh, in our ribbon up at the top here. So both my hands are off the keyboard. I can still see these. And they're going to be there until I've used a function or I escape. And quite literally, all I need to do is hit my escape key and I go back to normal functionality in my Excel again. Now, by using 
the Alt key, and the letter combinations, we can navigate through all the functions in our ribbon. So it, it, it helps if you're familiar with where the functions lie, but over time, you, what you'll find is you're going to automatically know, okay, this is in the data tab, this is in the home tab. And, and so it, it kind of takes a step away. So I'm going to hit my Alt key again. And um, so, for example, if, if I hit H, now it opens up the home ribbon for me. The other thing it does is it comes up with a whole bunch of new letter shortcuts for me. So by hitting any one of these letters or numbers in this case, it's going to bring up that function. So if I want to go another level down, what I let's say I want to go into the format. So this is uh, probably something that doesn't get used by many Excel users. Um, but when we use our keyboards, we're going to be using this format menu quite a bit here. So now all I need to do, again, I have no, no hands on the keyboard here. But when I hit O, that format selection is going to open up and, again, give me a whole bunch of new options that I can use just by using my keyboard. So again, I'm going to exit out of here. And what I've done is I've prepared some examples uh, that will help give you some practice in thinking and navigating this way. So the first thing that I've asked us to do is to expand a grouping. Uh, and so a lot of people are used to using our mouse uh, and, and clicking on the plus sign uh, in order to expand the grouping. But we can actually do that by keeping our hands on the keyboard. And by he keeping our hands on our keyboard, it saves us time. The other thing I find is it, it saves a lot of focus. As soon as I go from keyboard to mouse, it, it often breaks my train of thought. When I can keep my hands on the keyboard, I stay in my, I guess, my creative or my analytic flow, and I, and I don't get sidetracked. So let's expand this grouping. I'm going to hit Alt. And in order to expand it, I'm now going to go into my Data tab in my ribbon. So to do that, I'm just going to press A. There's my Data tab. And what I want to do is to show everything, and that's going to be my letter J. So when I hit J, You'll notice that this minus has, or this plus has changed to a minus, and I've expanded all of the options for me. Next, I want to change the font size in this cell to 16 point. So again, we'll start by hitting Alt. Font size is in the Home tab, so I'll hit H. Once I'm in here, I can see you know where your font sizes are. They're right here, and it tells me there's FS. So now if I hit F and S, it's now into my font size control. Now I can type in with my keypad the numbers, or I can down arrow and go down to 16 point. Hit enter, and now I'm back, excuse me. Hit enter, and now I'm back into Excel. So I just hit escape at the end there to go back into Excel. All right, the next thing I want to do is change my row height. Again, how many times have we tried to like highlight this and oh, I need to get exactly to 35, but my mouse is too twitchy and I can't quite nail it. Um, so this way we're gonna use our keyboard to do it. So we're gonna hit Alt, H to go to home. We're gonna go into our format section, which is O, and I'm gonna select the very first one which says row height, and that's an H. Now I have my row height selector. I'm gonna type in 35. Hit enter, and that row is now exactly 35. In this one, we're going to check to see if we have any dependents. So a, a dependent is we're trying to see if uh, any other cells in this worksheet or elsewhere in the workbook rely upon the values in here. So we are going to go through the formulas. You've probably seen dependency arrows before. So we will hit Alt, M for formulas. And once we're in here, we're going to select Trace Dependence, which is up here in the middle uh, with the D. So I've hit D. There is my trace arrow. Now, the challenge becomes, now the, sh the shortcut with your mouse is by clicking on this arrow, it takes me to the dependent cell. But we're again, we're going to try and not use our mouse to do this. So all I need to do is hit Control, and then the right or the close square bracket and it takes me to the end of that arrow. So sure enough, here is my cell with the dependency, and uh, I haven't had to use the mouse in order to go there. Okay, well, now what if I wanna go back? Well, I can hit Control, and now the left, or the uh, 
left square bracket, and it goes right back to where I started. Now I'm gonna we're gonna do an extra thing here, and uh, we're gonna get rid of that dependency arrow. Again, we could use our mouse. Instead, we're gonna use our keyboard, and in order to do that, we're gonna hit Alt M, A to remove arrows, and then a second A removes that dependency arrow. All right, next we're gonna freeze our window panes. So this can be a handy thing to do if you want if you have a legend at the top or headings on, along the left hand side that you want to see whether you've scrolled down or to the right. So in order to do that, that is in our view window. So we'll hit alt once. Now view is W at the top. So we'll hit our W. We want to freeze the panes, which is F. And it gives us a few options, whether we want to freeze the columns, the rows, or the panes. So we'll hit F a second time to freeze the panes. So now when I scroll, you're going to notice that everything above where I've frozen stays put. Same thing if I were to scroll to the right, you would always see those columns on the left-hand side uh, in view for us. We're going to open a second window of the workbook. So this is a way I like to... Uh, to work quite frequently. So rather than just having one view of my workbook, we can have two views and I can arrange them on my monitor so that I can see both of them at the same time. So in order to do that, that is again in view, we'll hit Alt W to get into view. We are gonna add a new window, which is our N key now. And sure enough, we can now see in our workbook or on our monitor, two versions of the same workbook. So I could have one workbook with one tab selected and my other one with a different tab or even have two separate uh, locations on the same tab, whatever works best. Oh, and I, we're gonna arrange all to see them both here. So I'm just gonna go back here and open that backup view and for new window. Uh, and now they're kind of overlapped and not showing very well. So we're gonna view all. So we're, again, we're gonna hit Alt view arrange all, and then tiled. And now this shows both of our workbooks side by side. Now um, on my screen here, you won't necessarily see it that way just because of uh, how it's set up for the, for the video. But uh, on your monitor, you should see uh, both of those workbooks and they will expand to completely fill your view for you. Um, and uh, with, with very little or no uh, empty space. So let me rearrange things here. That's handier to do uh, when you're working, not so handy when you're recording. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is collapse this grouping. So just how we opened it up, we can now reduce it so we don't have to see it. And so we're gonna hit Alt, A for data, and we're gonna hit H. So the H is actually up here. Um, if you have a wider ribbon view, uh, it'll actually say hide, um, and it'll make a little bit more sense for you. In mine, because I have a narrower view, it's all compressed. So we can now hit all, uh, the H, and it com collapses that group for us. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope that uh, as you continue to use Excel, both today and through the, the rest of this week, that uh, when you start thinking of reaching your hand over to that mouse, you, you, you take a step back and you think, hold on, I can probably do this with my keyboard. And uh, I, I promise you that within just a couple days of beginning that, uh, you're going to find that uh, it's so much easier than relying upon your mouse. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.